Las Vegas shooting was an unusual story from the beginning, bizarre in some ways. But 10 days into the investigation, things are getting stranger, if anything, more baffling. Initial accounts and the timelines of the shootings have been replaced. A new timeline featured on the Today Show indicates police could have identified Stephen Paddock's location far earlier than they actually did. Watch. This is the sound of the actual first shot Stephen Paddock fired from his Las Vegas hotel room. Call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. According to a revised police timeline, that was 9.59. Paddock began firing at the crowd outside at 10.05, then stopped at 10.15. A police SWAT team got to the 32nd floor at 10.17 and a minute later learned that the guard was shot and where the shots came from. That means it took Las Vegas police 19 minutes to find out what the guard and the engineer already knew, where a man was firing a gun on the 32nd floor. Well, today, hotel engineer Stephen Shuck spoke again about the attack and why the police were so slow to react to it, apparently. As soon as I started to uh, go to a door to my left, the rounds started coming down the hallway. I could feel them pass right behind my head. Uh, something hit me in the back, and I took cover. I uh, tried to think how I could get to Jesus because I could see that he was shot in the leg. So I called over the radio um, what was going on. As soon as the shooting stopped, we made our way down the hallway and took cover again. I told myself, you know, remain calm. If I freak out right now, it's, it's only going to get me killed or, or injured. And then, despite one of the biggest police investigations in the history of Las Vegas, somehow Paddock's home was broken into. His house in Reno was broken into by someone. We don't know why. We don't know why, what they took, if anything. Chris Cudialis writes for the Las Vegas Sun. Ted Williams is an attorney and former D.C. homicide detective, and they both join us. Ted, to you first. This timeline doesn't seem to make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense, Tucker. It's weird and bizarre, and you've got to wonder what is law enforcement saying to the public out here. They gave us this initial timeline that Campos was shot during the course of the actual shooting He's into the, the crowd. He's the security guard. He's the security guard. But let me just ask, why would he be at Paddock's door in the first place, well, this before any shooting took place? What had happened, Tucker, is that an alarm had went off up there. He's a security guard for the hotel, so he went up to check the alarm. Uh, the paddock had all of these cameras he had in place, saw him coming, shot 200 times through a door, and hit him in the leg with one of the, uh, some shrap metal. And then waited six minutes, opened fire, and it was more than an hour before police made it into the room. Chris, that account, that timeline, which is the revised version, is now being apparently contested by the hotel, which says that's wrong. Am I getting that correct? Correct. MGM Tucker has said that um, they don't necessarily agree completely with the timeline that police have provided. So I think this is the first time uh, throughout, throughout the 10-day investigation that MGM and police haven't at least publicly seen eye to eye on this timeline. But why have, why have the authorities, why have the investigators changed, so radically changed their, the sequence of events, the timeline? What, why did they do that? That's a great question. Um, Metropolitan Police here in Las Vegas has really made an effort over the past five years to really become as transparent as possible um, for the media and for the public. So that, that includes uh, updating daily, as we've seen throughout this investigation for the most part, uh, showing body cam video, and they've really tried to show the public everything that they know as soon as they know it. And uh, a lot of times you see authorities as well can get things mixed up, and it's uh, you know, now in the face of the public, a lot of people scratching their heads on what's yeah, going on. Yeah, this is not this is not a small thing, though. I mean, these are the core facts of the case. I and it is very confusing to me. Here's what we know, though. Apparently, Paddock's home, Ted, in Reno, was broken into. This is part of an active homicide investigation. You were a homicide investigator. How could you leave the home of the suspect unsecured? A week after the crime. You know, Tucker, this is evidence, as you know, they've served two search warrants on Paddock's homes. You would have think that all of his homes would have continued to be secure. The sad commentary, and we need to admit it, this was Keystone Cop. You, when I say Keystone Cop, that uh, place should have been secure. It was not, unfortunately. Well, it's just, Chris, I think part of the problem, I mean, the shooter apparently is dead. I mean, we're assuming there was just one shooter. 
But this shakes the public's faith in anything the investigators say. Again, have they given any indication of what new information they found that caused them to totally rearrange their understanding of what happened? Really, they haven't. Um, in terms of speaking to the media, they haven't been offered a or they haven't really offered any new information as to why the timeline shifted. Uh, Sheriff Joe Lombardo really kind of staying tight-lipped, if you will, uh, with regards to what happened, why the timeline shifted. Other than the fact that the timeline has shifted and that uh, Jesus Campos, the security guard, was found six minutes, or he'd been shot six minutes uh, before Stephen Paddock opened fire on the crowd, that's all we know at this point compared to what we were told earlier in the investigation that uh, he had come in towards the end of the firing and uh, was credited for stopping Paddock firing at the crowd. Which at least made sense. I mean, there was still the gap between the shooting right. of Campos and the moment when police found the body. But still, it, this does not make sense. So if, given this fact set, Ted, without speculating too much, sure. what's the likely explanation from what we know, or is there even one? Look, Tucker? You and I are going to be here next year, and I can unequivocally tell you, I don't think we are going to find the motive behind this killer. He's dead. We thought we were going to find it through Mary Lou Dantley, his girlfriend. We haven't found it there, his brother, Eric. Uh, so we're, we're stuck with a madman doing horrible things. And, th and this is part of the frustration, by the way, of law enforcement, that they cannot find the motive behind this. Law enforcement is always looking for a motive, and right. they can't, unfortunately. I, you know, I would settle for the facts, actually, oh, yeah. at this point. Can't get Absolutely. those either. Ted, Real Chris, facts. thank you both very much.